Greetings, my fellow humanoid dwellers. I create videos on technology and other random things. If you like this video, you might like others. If you don't like this video, you still might like others. Consider subscribing to my channel or checking out my Patreon page. If you already subscribe, hit that bell. In the last episode, we installed the SSH server. Now we're going to modify it so that it will start when we first power up the Pi. And then we will configure a static IP address so we can connect to the Raspberry Pi without needing to check on the ifconfig. You'll need to connect your Raspberry Pi back up to a keyboard, mouse, and monitor so you can make the changes directly in the Raspberry Pi. The first command you'll type is ifconfig. Then you'll write down the address next to the inet setting. Then you're going to type in the words sudo raspi-config. The menu you see now should pop up. You'll select Interface Ing Options. Then you'll select SSH in the next menu. Then you'll tab down and select Enable. This will cause the SSH server to boot up automatically the next time you power on the Raspberry Pi. Now you'll need to exit out of the menu, get back to the command prompt, and type sudo service ssh restart. This is a command we used in the last tutorial. Now you can switch over to the computer, use the program of your choice. I use PuTTY to SSH into the Raspberry Pi. You enter the IP address that you collected in the last steps when you did ifconfig into the box that says IP address. I saved mine from before under my default settings because I knew that I would forget. Then you go down and click open. You need to select yes here. The Raspberry Pi generates a random SSH key. And to log in, you, you type pi, username pi, and then the password raspberry. If you enter it wrong, it'll say access denied. You can do it again. If you enter it wrong again, you get to do it again. We're going to change the directory to go to the location that contains the configuration file that contains the interface setting so we can change it from a DHCP to a static. The name of the file is dhcpcd.config.conf. We're going to use nano, which is just a text editor, to adjust the settings. Once in the editor, you just scroll down using the arrow keys and we'll locate the area of the file that we need to make the changes. The hashtags or pound signs are what comment out the lines or make it so that it ignores the lines as it reads them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the pound symbols so that when we restart the Raspberry Pi, it will use the lines that we want it to use. And in this case, we're going to use interface Ethernet 0. We're going to set the static IP address to 192.168.0.10. The 8.8.8.8 is the DNS for Google. It's a free service, and what the DNS does is it translates the name, such as www.google.com, into the IP address. The static router that 192.168.0.1 is the default gateway out. So if you type in a location that the computer doesn't know about, it defaults to that IP address. You need to hit Control O to save your work. And then you can see it says it wrote 57 lines, so it modified it. Then you hit Control X 
to exit out of the program. Now we're going to go ahead and shut down the Pi and then restart it. sudo shutdown dash h now. Now is the time as to when. You could schedule when you wanted it to be shut down. And you can see we lost connection the minute we did that. Now we have to go back to the Raspberry Pi and reboot it. Next we're going to change the network settings on the laptop itself so that we can reconnect back to the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to set a static IP address in my computer because I put it on a network that I can't automatically connect to. If you remember, we set it to 192.168.0.10. So we need to set ours to a number very close to that. So we're going to choose 192.168.0.5 subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Now we're going to go back to PuTTY and we're going to reconnect with the new IP address and make sure that everything's working. The nice part is we also restarted the Raspberry Pi so we'll know if SSH is working automatically also. Type in the new IP address. We'll get a new SSH key because it's a new IP address. Now we should be able to log in with Pi and Raspberry. We'll do a quick IF config to make sure that the IP address is what we think it is, which it has to be because it wouldn't have connected if it weren't. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.